morning to you. It's another great day in Temecula. Everybody knows me. I'm Mayor Mike Nagar. What a privilege for me to be serving as your mayor again in this fantastic city. I'm honored that you're here with me this morning, and I sincerely thank each and every one of you for getting up early and taking time out of your busy schedules to be here today. We have many projects and programs planned this year that I plan on sharing with you this morning. But before I get started, I would like to first give special credit to a few special people. I can't start this day without thanking my beautiful wife who's here with me today. Honey, please stand real quick. My wife, Myla. Sweetheart, I don't, I don't know how you do it, how you take care of uh, Sienna, Liam, and myself, and keep yourself looking as beautiful as you are. And I don't get a chance to say that in front of 500 people, so God bless you. I love you so much. My daughter is in college, and she's out on a, uh, a choir tour, so she couldn't be here. And my uh, knucklehead son is in school. He's in the first grade. And if he was here, he'd probably tear up the place. So um, otherwise, he's here with us in spirit. I'm now in my fourth term on the city council. I'm amazing. I, I don't know where the time went. And I'm very proud to be working along some of the, alongside some of the most passionate and dynamic fellow council members a city could possibly have. I'd like to just take a moment, if you would indulge me, to recognize um, my council colleagues for their professionalism and for their unwavering dedication to the betterment of the city. And when I call your name, if you would just please stand and stay standing and hold your applause if you feel inclined to applause until they're all standing. Um, council member Ron Roberts left yesterday on vacation. He's not there. He's not here. Um, council member Jeff Comachero. Jeff, where are you? Stand on up. Stay standing, Jeff. Council member Chuck Washington and Mayor Pro Tem Marianne Edwards. Please. I, you, my colleagues, I want you to know here in front of these hundreds of people just how much I, I love you. And it's truly, truly a privilege working alongside with you. Um, you are. You guys are amazing. Now, many thanks also to the Pechanga Tribe, uh, today's program sponsor, for offering such a beautiful venue here at uh, Pechanga Resort and Casino. However, however, to us here in Temecula, if you're a Temeculan, we don't view Pechanga as a resort, but a people. And to the Pechanga people, Blessings and good morning to you. Now also it's my sincere gratitude to the Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce, truly one of the city's most value partners for hosting this event. I also would be remiss if I uh, didn't also say thank you to the State of the City Committee members who planned today's program and all the sponsors that made it all possible. A lot of work goes into this event. Now, let's begin, let's have some fun. In our city of uh, old traditions and new opportunities, that's our city motto, Temecula has emerged as one of the finest cities in the United States. We are Southern California's premier wine country destination with a tourism industry that has climbed from about $150 million a year to get this $600 million a year since the year 2000. $600 million a year with 35 wineries and still growing. That is something to applaud about. Well, at the same time, our population here in the city has tripled to 105,000 people who live in the city today. Temecula Valley was honored as one of the top 10 wine getaways in the nation, in the nation, by TripAdvisor based on the reviews of travelers of our wineries, our restaurants, our attractions, and our accommodations. We are here at Pechanga, 
which has developed into California's largest casino and resort during this time. And get this, 14,000 vehicles travel through our old town each and every day. We've become a magnet for businesses, tourists, and for residents who seek a high quality of life, and we're known throughout the nation. And why is that? What was it that influenced our success? How did it happen? Developing the city of Temecula over the last few decades, and after all, the city is only 23 years old, and continually enhancing it as a result of strategic planning among our citizens, businesses, visionaries, and nonprofit organizations, and all of those, you many in this room, who sponsor those nonprofit organizations, many, many, many of you in this room who step up. Truly, I could say, speaking to all you here today, all of us in this room are partners in our success. And it really is truly this synergy that creates the dynamic opportunities that exist in this city for everybody. Now, you may have noticed we've included a nonprofit organization expo today as a tribute and a long overdue tribute, I might, I might say, to our charitable nonprofit community. One thing I have to emphasize and make very clear is the nonprofit organizations that volunteered to participate in the expo today or in the video you're soon going to watch are among the hundreds of nonprofit organizations that we couldn't possibly fit in this room or in the video. And I'd like to acknowledge each and every one of them with you for their service. There's over 750 of them that operate in this valley. Would you please just give them a round of applause? So what do we have? We have a community of people supported by businesses, you all in this room, and by citizens, helping citizens. They all symbolize that special spirit of the people of Temecula. As I said, these nonprofits, the over 750 of them, are our foundation and our backbone. What's made us successful? It's about people helping people. It's why we enjoy all the rich blessings we enjoy in this town. Now, when we began putting uh, the, the process together, putting this program together uh, for this event, there was about a dozen of us sitting around a table brainstorming ideas and themes that would make this year's State of the City both informative and fun too. During the course of the discussion, one question kept coming up. And you've seen them before just a minute ago. What is it that makes Temecula such a special city? What makes Temecula a great place to live and to have a business and raise a family? What is it? Why is there such a special spirit of service to others here in this community? We kiddingly thought that if we can go back in time, perhaps we might learn how the building blocks of teamwork, collaboration, perseverance got started here in the city of Temecula. So, being the goof I like to be sometimes, you might have noticed that this year's theme is Back to the Future.
there's really no one thing that makes Temecula a great place to live. But if I had to point to something that makes me proud to be part of this wonderful city, it would be the spirit and the love of the people who live here. There are over 750 501c3 nonprofit organizations in the Temecula Valley working for our citizens each and every day. It's the people who make the spirit of Temecula. And nowhere is that spirit more evident than in our nonprofit community. People ask me very often, what makes Temecula so special? And, and the answer is very clearly that it's our citizens. We volunteer because it's who we are. It's service. It's our community. Anything we give makes it better. How can that not be the best thing you can do with your time? Temecula is a great place. One of the things that I felt um, from the early 80s about how great this particular city is, and it wasn't even a city then, it was just a little community where you could come into, is that people really banded together to do things. If something needed to be done, there was always a core of volunteerism that was there to get the work done. I think we have a community of problem solvers here, um, and they're all in it for the same thing. We want it to be the great place that it is to live and do business and to raise a family and to go to school. And so everybody's a problem solver. The community's been great for me. I want to turn around and help you. So Circle of Care has been serving the Temecula Valley since 1999. We serve about 350 families every week with daily necessities. Michelle's Place provides uh, diagnostic mammograms and ultrasounds for women who are under 40 have no insurance, and have a lump in their breast. The Assistance League has been in Temecula since 1989. We provide clothing for needy children in grades K through 12. Many people don't understand what hospice is all about. They think it's a building. They think it's a place that people go to. What they don't understand until they need it is that hospice is care that comes to you. And we provide their medical care, spiritual care, and other emotional supportive care. SAFE stands for Safe Alternatives for Everyone, and it was started in 1998 here in Temecula by citizens of Temecula. And we provide services for domestic violence victims and their children, as well as child abuse and youth violence prevention programs. Temecula Noon Rotary Club started in 75. Uh, Rotary itself is 108 years old, so we've been around just long enough to make an impact in the community where we've done school uh, scholarships, we've supported international projects, local projects, we have a community project that we do for the last 15 years, which is our holiday basket program. We've worked with the Rotary Park that's down in Old Town. Name a community project, Rotary's probably been involved. Uh, we started our Nicholas Foundation about eight years ago when our son was diagnosed with autism. We've expanded into a variety of different areas. We have support groups, we have play dates monthly, we have uh, different sports programs, uh, different technology, all kinds of neat things that have been there and, and grown because of the support of the community here. The Boys and Girls Club have been serving kids and families in Temecula and in its valley for approximately 23 years. We serve approximately 12,000 kids a year. In 1994, we recognized that there was a need for um, the youth in our area to have an opportunity to be involved in the performing arts. We work with teens and we also work with adults. So the program has expanded from its original conception in 1994 because our community has expanded. With all the places in Southern California that I've worked, I have never seen the amount of support by leadership and by a city like Temecula. Not only have they supported us with grants, but just the support of connecting us with people, having business. The, the atmosphere is one of, they know the nonprofits in this town make the town better. We cannot be all things for all people as government. Um, and what we've discovered is that what we do best is actually partnering and facilitating. And so we've created a number of partnerships 
with nonprofits in the community. When the city can, it's great that the city steps up to support the nonprofits because it goes full circle. Those nonprofits then support the cities, they support the job base, they support everything that's good in the community. So you've got one thing leading to another and it comes around full circle. When the city supports the nonprofits, the nonprofits support the families, the families then turn around and make Temecula a better place to live. The way that um, nonprofits operate, and, and they should operate, is they work with the city. We're a team. I would say that there is no way that the city could duplicate in terms of resources, the cost, and the expertise to do some of the work, or all of the work, that the nonprofits do in our community today. It used to be there were three or four events a year supporting, uh, you know, a, a nonprofit. And now, um, there are things every weekend. There's several things every weekend. No one has ever turned away on a basis of their ability to pay for services. And this would not be possible without the generosity of the people in this community and the way the businesses literally just come together and they're so generous with their time and their resources in helping us reach out and take care of our patients and our families in our community. We are really no different than any other nonprofit in our community. We rely on, we can't survive without the support of our business community. Corporate sponsors and the sponsors and the volunteers that not only donate their time but donate their money to this organization is absolutely vital to our success. When they understand what you're doing and you put it out there and present it to them the right way, they want to get involved and their employees get involved. The business community is instrumental to Michelle's Place and its success. Without them, we couldn't provide the services that we do provide. The practitioners, the medical offices, um, Breastlink, for instance, that provides all of our mammograms and ultrasounds at a discounted price, those are the things that allow us to do what we do. First Trace is supported by the business community in that they provide volunteers for us. They provide help at all of our events. The uh, business community also provides uh, donations and matching grants through uh, things like uh, Walmart matching grant program, um, Abbott uh, has helped us with matching grant uh, programs and uh, many of the uh, businesses that we work with through the team referral network uh, give actively to Birth Choice of Temecula. When you find people who are doing things solely because they care, it's unbelievable what can be accomplished and that's what we see in Temecula. So back in 2007, when the wildfires uh, were devastated, just devastating to San Diego residents, they came up here to Temecula and six um, emergency shelters were established. So we worked hand in hand with the city officials, with other nonprofits, with the grocery stores, um, the department stores, it all came into our warehouse and then distributed out to the different shelters. And it really showed the spirit of Temecula at that time. Every year, we partner with our Temecula School District partners, our nonprofit partners, and we identify families that wouldn't have holiday without us. So at Thanksgiving, we gather the Thanksgiving meal, traditional classic Americana. We're talking about 200 families. That's 400 children. That's pretty serious here in Temecula. So through Michelle's Place, which is the only provider in the Inland Empire doing the service, um, they're able to find out, do I have breast cancer? What is that lump? You know, am I gonna be okay? Is this normal? Um, we're really truly saving lives. We actually had a social event earlier this year where we had about 40 families together with the support of a local restaurant and everybody got each other and it was a community that had been built and we kind of just took a, a step back and realized you know this is what it's about you know uh, we were lost when we started this foundation and we didn't know where to go people didn't understand our child in line you'd be judged for any kind of temper tantrum or anything else but we kind of had an aha moment over the last you know few months that the beauty of what's happened is we have a partnership not only within our community of autistic families, but we have a partnership with the typical population that we never had before. Um, people understand and are aware of what autism is, and that wouldn't be possible without all the different partnerships that we have. You know, with the, the 
autism um, increase we, ha we have that uh, I think nobody knew about it until uh, probably around five or six years ago and how it was increasing uh, because everybody kind of kept it on the back burner and they didn't want to talk about it. Now people talk about it. Now it's out. And I have never seen um, so much support for something like this. And I'm proud of my city. If I could describe that those magical relationships that make Temecula what it is, I think I would say seamless. Teamwork. Heart. Collaboration. Spirit. It's the spirit and the love of the people who volunteer in this community and the businesses that support them that makes our city so successful. Our community is one that is always working to create a better future for the generations to come. Good morning. Well, good morning. I was wondering, I'm thinking about moving my family here to Temecula. My great-great-granddaddy used to live in Temecula back in the day, and he told me some crazy stories. Do you happen to have any books on what the future of Temecula will look like? The future? Well, maybe if you want to learn about the future, maybe you need to start with taking a look at the past. This just came back this morning. The past. A Thousand Years in Temecula Valley by Tom Hudson. Hmm. Future. Wow, I can't emphasize just how important you folks here today in the business community and the Chamber of Commerce is to making the city of Temecula what it is. It's by your donations to these nonprofits that go to our citizens, which starts the whole cycle. And so I want you to know how grateful and thankful I am for your participation. Since the beginning, Temecula citizens have given their time, talent, and money to support each other. It is the spirit of unity and the giving that exemplifies Temecula and has established our reputation as a city that works together to successfully move forward through challenging times and good times. It is truly this spirit that is the source of all of our blessings. Now, Challenging as it has been these last several years economically for all of us, the city of Temecula has weathered the great, success, uh, the great Recession with a balanced budget every year. And our five-year projections show a continued balanced budget. We are also seeing the numbers improving. This fiscal year, our revenues are expected to be about $59 million, and we expect revenues next fiscal year to be about $60 million. That may not be much of an increase, but we're headed in the right direction. I, I have to tell you today, the ship is steady and the winds are strong. We're setting sail. Also good news, Temecula's unemployment rate in March was reported to be 7.1%. That's down from 8.5% in March of 2012, and down even further from 9.4% in March of 2011. We're heading in the right direction.
It is also currently lower than the county, state, and the national averages. The city's objectives remain steadfast in encouraging job growth. This past year, we opened the Temecula Valley Entrepreneurs Exchange, a business incubator and resource center focused on fostering job creation. We are currently housing five, non, uh, five uh, startup companies. We also recently implemented a local vendor ordinance that gives Temecula businesses higher priority to do business with the city proper. Recently, the Rose Institute rated Temecula in the top 60s, it's top 60 of 421 cities across the nation as the least expensive city to do business with in the United States. Very important to the city and our citizens, we're putting our youth to work. We offer college, high school, and get this, special needs intern programs. We have youth in government. We have the region's largest college and vocational fair held at the Promenade Mall with over 180 colleges and universities from across the nation participating. We have a youth conference, a science and technology fair, and much, much more being planned. We have a commitment, and I want everybody to know here, we are committed to Temecula's youth succeeding. We are also going to continue to value our family-friendly city with, with, with countless city-sponsored events year-round. Many of these events attract thousands of people that support your local businesses. What do we have? Benefit concerts at the Civic Center. The New Year's Eve grape drop. Our own version of Rockefeller Center with ice skating in Town Square. The Rod Run. Race for the Cure. Western Days. The Street Painting Festival. Our Fourth of July Parade and our fireworks show which draws 10,000 people every year. Halloween Carnival. Our Santa's Electric Light Christmas Parade. Our Easter Egg Hunt. And of course, our Balloon and Wine Festival and, and many, many more. I, I can't name them all. I don't know any other city our size that hosts so many wonderful community events. They are important though. Events like these keep the small town feel that we all experience in what has become a big and beautiful city. And with city growth comes infrastructure projects. Let me tell you about a few of them this year. The first phase of the French Valley Parkway interchange. By the beginning of 2014, we'll have a brand new southbound off-ramp from the freeway. This will include, uh, phase one will include a wider southbound in, uh, Winchester off-ramp and an additional exit lane. We've all seen the backups on the freeway getting off. This will relieve the backups we see at all of our freeway off-ramps. It's important to note, the, uh, the state of California, Caltrans, is supposed to build freeways. Simply put, cities don't build freeways. But in Temecula, we build freeways. You may have noticed the Main Street Bridge is gone. It's being replaced by a brand new steel truss bridge with rock pillar entrances and wide sidewalks. You can watch its projects, uh, progress on the city's webcam, uh, linked to the city's website. Some more projects. The Temecula Community Center on Poolhole Street will be getting a $1.7 million facelift. The former YMCA will become a new community uh, center for active adults with a $1.4 million worth of enhancements. And get this, we're also building a $1.2 million inclusive special needs playground at Margarita Park. The last segment of Butterfield Stage Road is being constructed as we speak. This will allow drivers to travel from Marietta Hot Springs Road all the way past Southern Temecula into the Morgan Hill area. Now I'm really looking forward to this next project. We've earmarked over a half a billion dollars over the next two years to make connections, add striping, 
and create opportunities for cyclists, bicyclists, cyclists, citywide. This is very exciting. In fact, next week, the League of American Bicyclists is recognizing Temecula with a bronze level award for being a bicycle friendly city. And that's good news. Those awards don't come easy. Now I want to touch on a few private developments going on as well. KB Homes, Standard Pacific, and Vandale Builders have all begun construction of homes in the Royal Paul Ranch specific plan. Mercedes-Benz of Temecula, don't you like the way that sounds? Mercedes-Benz of Temecula, I can hear it on the radio, okay? Mercedes-Benz, Newport Beach, Temecula, I like it. Um, they'll start construction this month and will be open for business in the spring of 2014. A new Subaru auto dealership, if Subaru is your thing, is being constructed and will be open for business this year. You also may have noticed several buildings under construction in Old Town. A 66,000 square foot, four-story mixed-use building is going up on the corner of 2nd Street and Mercedes. There's another four-story, 43,000 square foot mixed-use uh, uh, building at the corner of Old Town Front Street and 3rd Street. And uh, those of you who continually illegally park in the uh, uh, parking lot next to Starbucks in Old Town, uh, there's plans there for a 23,000 square foot three-story office building that are going to start soon. We've all parked there. Yeah, so, <laughs> right? all right. um, April 16th marked the grand opening of Portola Terrace, a 45-unit multifamily complex over on Poolhole Street. There are a few other multifamily projects under construction that, I, that are also walkable and pedestrian friendly uh, to local businesses. I'm gonna name a few of them here. Um, we have a 210 unit development under construction right now at uh, Rancho and Yanez. Woodside Home is, Homes is uh, doing that. I believe Woodside's here today. I had a chance to shake their hand. Um, approximately 450 residential units uh, behind Home Depot at the villages of Paseo de Sol. That's being built by TriPoint Homes and uh, TDC Properties. Now, why do I mention all this? I've mentioned um, public uh, projects and I mentioned private projects. I want you to know that the factor is for every $1 million spent, seven to 25 jobs are created depending on the project. Um, in fact, let me tell you a little more. Today's title sponsor, Temecula Valley Hospital, plans to hire 500 employees when it opens its door in 2013, 500. This is a five-story state-of-the-art hospital. It has 140 private rooms, 20 ICU beds, four operating rooms, and a 41-bed emergency room with a specialized stroke and cardiovascular services. It has also spurred development of many medical office, offices in the immediate vicinity. So get this, the total residual job growth from the hospital alone is a whopping 1,500 jobs. Our planning department is also busy preparing a plan for the Jefferson Avenue area. It's all based on community input and we're going to revitalize that corridor just like we did in Old Town. There was a time in Old Town when tumbleweeds literally rolled through town. But through strategic planning, look what we have today. And we're going to do the same thing in the Jefferson Corridor. Whether community input on development or city programs, I want to keep emphasizing there is an amazing spirit in the city of Temecula. The community of Temecula citizens, businesses, and nonprofits have a deep-rooted spirit and love for our city. I want to get a little personal here for a minute, so bear with me. Uh, many of you know my son Liam was diagnosed with autism in 2008. And I didn't know where to turn or what to do. And simply put, I don't mind telling you here, uh, I was a very broken man at a very low place. Uh, but I learned very quickly that I was far from being alone because in 2008, one in 88 children were being diagnosed with autism. Now, the Center for Disease Control reports that one in 50 children will be diagnosed with autism. Had it not been for the R. Nicholas Foundation 
and many others of you in this room, uh, we, my family would have been lost. But I want you to know that sometimes the good Lord up above uses trials to bring about his purposes. Uh, all of our lives will be touched in one way or another by autism because it's an epidemic. And I'm very proud to be able to be a voice for that community now and to have formed the Southwest Riverside Autism Task Force, which is a collaborative effort of elected leaders throughout Southwest Riverside County. Together, we've developed a regional resource guide with information to assist those citizens and families who are stricken with autism. But we did not stop there. The city now has a human services department with the support of my council colleagues who show a deep compassion. The city has a human services department committed to helping not only children with autism, but children of all special needs. My son is thriving now because of people in this community who loved him. And I'll tell you, I've seen the power of love. I've seen my son's teachers, Now I'm going to give them a shout out, they're not here, Miss Julie, Miss, Miss Amy, and Miss Raquel who are with them today, who have, who have and who are loving that boy out of autism. I've seen the power of love. Using a similar approach, the city of Temecula, along with Murrieta, who I proudly, I know we have Murrieta representatives here today, who I proudly am able to say are part of our twin cities. Yes, Temecula and Murrieta are the twin cities. Reach to regional leaders to form yet another task force. The Regional Family, Youth, and Health Task Force comprised of 24 elected officials from eight cities and eight school districts. The task force is dedicated to ensuring families and youth are better informed to deal with modern day influences. And we read about these things on the news all the time. I'm talking about violent gaming addictions, online bullying, sexting, cyber safety, drugs, alcohol, and mental health. Now we know investing in our children, we've learned this here in Temecula, we know investing in our children while they are young, just like the Boys and Girls Club and a lot of other of our nonprofits, investing in children while they're young is what we need to do so they end up in college and not jail. That's our dedication, that's our commitment to the youth of this community. We had our first task force meeting last week on gaming addictions. I encourage you all here to visit Temecula's webpage and uh, watch the presentation given by uh, Dr. Andy Doan. It was compelling and stunning. When community leaders and citizens join together for a common cause, that's the spirit I'm talking about. That's the spirit that's strong in Temecula. We have learned to move mountains in this city. But you know what? We save mountains too. The city's spirit and love was never more evident than the unified movement of our valley over a seven year battle to save Puesca Mountain from a massive quarry. It threatened Temecula's high quality of life and the Pachanga people's creation area. But on November 15th, the end of Liberty Quarry was announced through a historic agreement by the Pachanga people. Now, November 15th every year is and will always be a city recognized local holiday called Pachanga Puesca Mountain Day. It's important to tell you, and I want to share with you how our proclamation reads, because it really speaks to the heart of our people here in this valley. Quote, the crying rocks of Puesca Mountain wept with happiness as the winds blew strong and clean, and then all the people cried with profound gratitude, unquote. That's what our proclamation says. That's how important it was to this city and to her people. 
And that's how important it was to the Pechanga people. And there, and I witnessed it for seven years, the spirit of Temecula once again. So, you may wonder, what does the future of Temecula hold? Hmm. Wait a minute. You know something? It's coming to me. I have an idea. I'll be right back. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, the future of Temecula looks pretty darn good.